Okay. So you'll start with your introduction. Okay. No, thank you, sir. So my name is Neelam and I hail from Mumbai. Um, from a very, very early age, I'm someone who believed in community service. Uh, I have done my schooling from Mumbai itself. Uh, since my father was in Indian Navy, I have done my schooling from a government school. After pursuing my 12th standard, I have done my graduation in BSc Biotech, uh, which is from Ruya College. And right now I'm working as an HR professional who has an experience of more than 2.5 years into recruitment and as well as business HR. And uh, as a student right now, I'm looking for an institution where I can upskill myself, expand my knowledge base and understand the business concepts. Okay, just a second. Huh? So, Dilam, you just told me that uh, since very early age, you were very interested in community services. So, when did it started and what have you done till now in terms of so, community service? Uh, in terms of community service, during my school days, I was a part of Scouts and Guides, to, uh, guides till ninth standard. And after that, I did not get to serve the society. But uh, when I started working, I joined an NGO, which is UNI. Uh, apart from that, on weekends, I give I devote my time to another NGO, which is Antarang Foundation. And I'm someone who is very passionate about gardening also. So I'm doing a community service, which is Green Souls, where we um, grow vegetables for the cancer patients, which is near my locality. So these are the three things which I'm uh, doing from past uh, 2.5 years to serve the community. Okay. So don't you think you can also be in uh, in a course which is more of development oriented or uh, a course which is which belongs to social work and development studies? So with all these interests and activities that you do apart from your academic and professional life, so you you seems to enjoy uh, more doing the community service. So don't yes, you think sir. making a career in that aspect? Uh, no, as far as uh, career is involved, I'm really uh, someone who is passionate about HR. And uh, this is just a way uh, from me to give it back to the society. I, I do really in, uh, enjoy the community service. But as a career, if you if you, if you talk about, then it's definitely HR for me. Okay. So when we say uh, we need to give it back to society, so can you tell me what we have taken from the society so that you are having that obligation that you need to give back? So how do you measure that? What have you taken from the society and in return, what will you give as a community service? So is there any measurement? Um, measurement in what term, sir? Uh, I didn't get your question. You just said that in that way, you can give something back to the society. Hmm. So giving something back to the society, that means you, are, you have taken something from the society. So are you okay. uh, hmm. measuring your uh, community service in that sense or it comes from your heart, it comes from the empathy that you have for the people? Uh, it's come from my heart, sir. It's just an inner calling for me. Okay, so uh, just, there the is, was just there, like there, that. Yeah, there is no uh, give and take in this. Uh, it's just an inner calling for me and whatever I do, I do it from my complete heart and soul. Hmm. So how do you see that these, the, these things that you do apart from your job and academics uh, that you do in terms of community service, how it is going to help you in saving your career? Uh, so uh, while working with these NGOs, uh, I interacted with a lot of diverse uh, people. Uh, also, um, in terms of if I, talk, if I connect with my HR profession, again, uh, my daily task is to you know deal with people and diverse workforce. It helps me understand uh, people better. It helps me in uh, building relationship uh, better with my employees as well. So this is a takeaway. Like I'm, you know, able to interact so and communicate you, with diverse workers better. Can you give me some example that you were able to understand someone in better way because of you have uh, you have had similar experiences. In your so, sir, uh, spe speaking to different diverse workforce, it actually helps you to break the barrier of communication. So, once you are frequently talking to different kind of people, it becomes very easy for you to communicate in a much more efficient and better way. So, there is no hesitation, and the communication barrier is um, is not there anymore. So, that's how it helps me in everyday communication. Okay. Any other advantage? Um, apart from that, uh, it has made me more empathetic towards people. It has uh, 
um, working with NGO had made me more patient. And um, earlier, I used to react uh, suddenly, but now, um, work, uh, now dealing with people or employee, I take my own time in making any decision. Okay. So this is the generic uh, personality-based improvement that you get from that place. So can you be a little more technical or a specific that uh, you do something in your community service? It is going to directly help you in your future, not like uh, recent working or present working environment, but in the future working environment or in MBA. Something that you'll be getting that advantage from the exposure that you are having right now. Sir, as an advantage, what I see is that uh, uh, if I if I'm able to connect with it, then uh, I can definitely moving forward um, working with this NGO and creating more networks with this, I can definitely, if I go to an organization and if I'm in a place of decision making or making any impact or making any change in the organization, I can imbibe these, uh, I can utilize these networks in CSR activities. And I can uh, encourage more people or motivate more people to actually work towards a society, which again comes in under the purview of uh, company CSR policy as well. Okay. So what do you want to do in HR? Like, what is your career goal associated with HR? Um, so, sir, if you see my journey as an HR, I have worked in recruitment and it's been nine months I'm working as a business HR. But I strongly believe that uh, this is a small portion of HR. I have not uh, worked in training or development or, say, compensation and benefits. Also, I do not have a complete understanding how a business or organization functions. In order to be in a position or make any change in the organization, I need to understand different departments. I need to understand how they interact with each other, how an organization structure is made. And uh, that is the reason, uh, like I want to be more specialist and generalist in this profile. Moving forward, I want to be in a position where I'm actually heading a vertical, a business vertical. And uh, uh, that is the reason, like that is how I see myself uh, moving forward in this HR uh, domain. So, so all those things that you said that you want to understand this particular skill or you want to have these skills or have this knowledge. So, so don't you think that those understanding, those knowledge, you can also have even without doing MBA, uh, like gaining some certificate courses or uh, uh, attending some seminars and workshop related to that. Uh, okay. So, sir, uh, I believe that there is no substitute to academic knowledge. If I go, if I talk about the course curriculum and if I have been through all the subjects uh, and the uh, courses this curriculum has to, this program has to offer, I really want to uh, build a concrete base for myself. I really want to learn from the scratch. Uh, I want to start from ground zero so that I have a strong crux moving forward because uh, this learning is not limited to two years of program. The learning, what I'm going to take away from this program will stay with me in my next 30 years of corporate life. Uh, for me, honestly, um, it, it is uh, doing MBA is not what uh, my next job is going to be. It's more like what are the skill sets I'm going to adapt? What are the capabilities I'm going to build? And what is the impact I'm going to make in an organization moving forward? So I believe that uh, doing a full-time uh, program uh, is the is the uh, right choice for me. Okay. So so I'll, I'll uh, sorry again, but I'll just pick a line from your previous explanation. You just told me that uh, you are doing MBA for the next 30 years of your life or career ahead. Correct. And we have also heard people saying that the MBA that we did 10 years before is not working right now. So are you sure that the MBA that you'll be doing in the next two years will be useful enough for the next 30 years? <sighs> So, sir, I believe that life is a learning process and uh, the business are thriving in a continuous, uh, uh, constantly changing environment. So, definitely, whatever the traditional um, equipments or method we utilize, it's not going to, uh, it's, it's not necessary that it's going to work each and everywhere. But also, this is a process where it's going to equip you, equip you with the method, methodology to how to deal with the new challenges. So uh, again, uh, coming back to your question, uh, what uh, it will help me to build a capability where I'm able to um, uh, to solve a problem which is very new to me and uh, learn in the complete process. Okay. So so talking about the change that we might face and the external dynamicity, 
hmm. uh, which will happen and which will force us to change our way of working. Yes. So how do you see that COVID has changed the HR functional or HR department in terms of okay. their operations and their functions? Uh, so I think the most, uh, uh, you are asking about the challenges or the way how we are- The changes, uh, the, the way it has changed the HR uh, functions. Okay, so the most important part which I can uh, figure out through my experience is that uh, people are now more emphasis on uh, emphasizing on mental health of the employees. The companies are completely focusing their uh, uh, their uh, are completely focused on employee wellness programs. Uh, apart from that, if I talk about the physical thing, then again, we have shifted to virtual environment and how we work in a hybrid environment. Uh, as per the HR, the challenges has increased more because engaging a, uh, engaging a group of 1000 employees in a virtual world is not an easy task. Apart from that, um, uh, uh, it, it, it has become very difficult. Uh, if I talk about my personal experience, it has become very, uh, there, there have been challenging days where I have to connect with the employees uh, who are you know, in a grief. So uh, I think these, I, I mean, HR are struggling and these are the challenges which I'm facing or an, maybe an HR is facing. Okay, H just, just remind me in the, in the end of interview to give some feedback on this line. Huh. So, so, so you just told me that uh, um, the challenge that you faced, you, know, you called many employees and they were in green. Hmm. So, so your role is just about recruitment. Huh? Uh, I don't think that there is a big change between... No, sir. Uh, right now, uh, I just want to correct you over there. I was into recruitment from past two years. Right now, I'm working as in business HR, which is completely okay. a different role, uh, where I'm handling employee uh, relations. I'm handling their grievances. I'm handling their issues. Uh, I'm taking induction and uh, I'm also in, involved in various employee engagement framework, which comes okay. under the purview of this. So I need okay. to connect so, with the employees. So Lina, uh, we are uh, reading newspaper these days and, and uh, the, uh, the word it is popping up regularly that this period is called great resignation period. So, so considering any company and you can choose the industry, you can choose the any uh, type of company and just uh, tell me that I'm choosing this type of industry or this type of company and and suggest me some strategy to, to <clears throat> keep people with the company like like uh, just slow down the attrition rate uh, so you can take any co uh, corporate or any industry of your choice and tell me some strategies with that uh, they can uh, slow down the attrition rate okay uh, so, sir, the article which you mentioned is something which I was reading yesterday itself. Um, so, in order to bring in HR strategies, I think the reason why there is uh, this is a period of great resignation is because uh, employees are more focusing towards uh, a company which is more purposeful. So, in order to reduce your attrition rate, you can uh, you can make a system or a culture which is more purposeful because people are more driven towards it. Again, like I mentioned, uh, people are looking for the companies which are more employee centric and which uh, which who have a very strong policy for employee welfare. Um, apart from that, uh, I think creating an employer branding will be a very um, strategic move in order to uh, <coughs> curb your attrition rate. Okay. So how do you brand as an employer? So as an employer, you have to show the employees that what you actually believe in what the company Your employees is actually, or anyone who is out there anyone anyone who is looking for a job or anyone who is uh, in a dilemma to choose which company uh, so you need to create a very employee value proposition uh, in order to bring in a employer branding you need to tell them what they actually believe in what are the policies they follow what is the work culture within the company and uh, that is how you attract the best talent in the industry can you give me some example that how company does this employee branding? Uh, so employee branding. Um, I can give an example of uh, uh, sustainability, like the companies are more fo focused on sustainability and they are... Uh, uh, give, me, give me the name of the company and what ad or what keywords they used to brand their uh, employment um, structure or employment... Uh, I'm not able to uh, 
recall it i have read it somewhere but i am not able to recall it the company was nike but uh, i am not able to recall the purpose as of now okay so so in which company do you work i work with reliance geo reliance geo so how big is this company so so i am basically in a process uh, in a non voice process where i am handling um, uh, employee span of 400 and uh, so the approximate headcount it keeps on changing if i be very specific with the number so right now the headcount is 906 but it keeps on changing because we have different batches coming every week so the approx number is 900 okay so so i'll give you a question which is not directly related to you Uh, you you might take some time to think and then answer uh, see uh, there is a company which is uh, cement manufacturing company which has some 500 employee in different different uh, functional department and there is a it company which also has 500 employees so can we tell can you tell five major differences in hr functions of these two companies you can take some time to think about it just hold your thought and think a bit and then answer five different Uh, difference between both so one is more more of a like a labor based company uh, that's your thing to decide i just told you that okay. cement company and hmm. what is the it company okay so sir you are asking about the difference in policies you can tell in 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 any way matlab I mean, there difference in policies or different in practice or difference in the charge structure okay. or what sir okay uh, so sir one difference i can definitely think of but i am not i'll not be able to uh, give you a concrete answer for this uh, because to answer this i need to go through the policies again but there may be a major difference in the policies which they follow which they follow in it company or a manufacturing company assuming that it is more of a, a labor based uh, company uh, i'm i'm talking uh, in the purview of that um, the first can be the policies uh, the working hours maybe in it company usually people are paid for the overtime but uh, in manufacturing company there is expected out of them that you know overtime is okay so uh, in that isn't way it, isn't again it reverse neela isn't it reverse in manufacturing company you have to pay for the overtime because government has this stipulation and uh, but but for it companies is uh, most of the thing that is more uh, a uh, decision making based or creativity based or intellectual capability based so there is no extra money for overtime in so most it depends companies but the people take work to their home and they do it because they need to write code and they can do it at any place so so i think it's reverse uh, in in a manufacturing company if you uh, telling any labor that stay one more hour you have to pay the overtime Or yeah but other other differences but it companies i like the the it company which i worked in they used to pay for pay for the overtime um uh, the third can be the organizational structure how they functions and how different uh, departments interact with each other uh, the leadership could be uh, different for the different companies and um, as of now i can only think about these four now no, i just uh, i will add on this the, the organizational structure will be more bureaucratic in cement based company and more flat in it companies hmm. okay matlab you should think on on different uh, 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 differences that that can be uh, created or that will be there with respect to the industry type okay so what's your grace in subject sir i've done bsc biotechnology biotechnology and you moved from bsc biotechnology to hr So yes. why did you pursue biotechnology ahead after your BSc? So uh, to be very honest, when I was in my second year of uh, BSc biotechnology, I wanted to uh, I wanted to fund my own IV trip. In order to do that, I went into a consultancy where I worked as a recruiter, 
at that very moment, I realized that I'm someone who's very uh, good in coordinating with clients. I'm someone very good in interviewing people. And that was a job which I really enjoyed. That was a like a two months of uh, internship, you can say. And um, I know it came a very little late to me, but at that moment, I decided that I want to build my career into HR. So it was in second year of my graduation that I was very clear in my head that I wanted to have a career in HR. So, so what if uh, you will not get any chance to be in HR and the college will offer you some other specialization instead of HR? What other specialization would you choose and why? Sir, I did not get your question. Uh, uh, I'm telling you, what if, if the, the, the college you know, or the institution will not give you HR specialized, but they will offer you to pick any other specialization of your choice. So which specialization you will choose instead of HR and why? Um, so I'm more towards inclined towards maybe analytics because then again, uh, using the analytics and data visualization and dashboard, I can uh, blend these two um, concepts or blend these two domains and work towards something uh, related to HR again. Uh, I'm also inclined working towards in a, uh, in a more, uh, maybe an, like an OD practitioner or uh, maybe into a something which is related to change management. I'm open to learning. Like I said, sir, I, uh, I do not have a knowledge about marketing sales and operations. And if given a chance and if given the right mentorship, I am uh, open to learning and I can, uh, definitely uh, see where my real strengths are so what do you see your where do you see yourself in next 10 years like like in what role or in what capacity um so in next 10 years like uh, i want to be i want to head a business vertical i want to be in a position where i am uh, making decision my decisions are impacting uh, the organization in a positive way where i am being innovative where i am creating and uh, i am utilizing uh, digitalization to improve the employee experience and uh, basically transforming the employee experience and moving towards a more data driven hr so now just tell me in achieving those goals, what are the challenges you are going to face? Um, sir, in like, uh, can you please more reframe this question again? Uh, I was saying that you have you have some goals for the next ten years and the mm -hmm. next ten years ahead. I was just asking, what are the challenges that you are going to face to reach those goals or to achieve those goals? To uh, to be in a position of that uh, leadership. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. Exactly. Uh, so I believe that uh, uh, for a leader or to be in a position, I think uh, if I talk about with personal uh, personal life, I think age demography will be a challenge for me where uh, after 10 years down the line, I'll be at a position where I'll be uh, like every other woman, I'll be in a dilemma where I where, where I'll choose where I'll be where I have two options where I'll choose the corporate world or my uh, family. So I think that is the uh, one of the challenge age demography, which is known as will be uh, will be a challenge for me at that particular other, time. Other challenges? Other challenges. Uh, as of now, I don't see any other challenges, but uh, um, this, is a, this is something which I'm think no. of right now. Okay. So, so, <clears throat> If I'll ask you, in what other area other than corporate or even any other organization, NGO, what other area you can use the HR skills? So whatever we teaches you in HR, whatever you'll be learning in HR, in what other places you can use the same HR to gain anything from this practice or, or customize these practices for any particular situation? So what are the areas that you identify where you can use your HR skills? Uh, except for the corporate world? Exactly. So it can be used in uh, NGOs. HRs uh, I, are there. I, I, was also, uh, I also told you that uh, except for the corporate and NGOs. Uh, then we have the labor industry. We have manufacturing industry. We have hospitality They are industry. already corporate, but they are corporate world only. Um... Uh, I cannot think of anything right now. 
think about it and tell me. Sure, sir. Um, okay, the last question for you, Elfi. Uh, what is human capital? Human capital is basically it's a it's a resource, and uh, human capital can be defined as some. Uh, so humans are called as resource because they have they have the capability to utilize anything and make a new resource. So I think that is what is human capital is. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So, so Neela, for the feedback, I will be telling. I mean, love. Acha the interview tomorrow. You were very good in terms of uh, creating a. Thought process, even in the new areas where you have not been thought, you have not thought enough, enough before. But us me kya hai ki thoda aur push karna padega apne aap ko. Like the changes that I, मतलब the differences that I asked you, ki uh, company or cement ki company or IT company me difference batao. ठीक है. अलगी जो दो difference तुम लाए वो बढ़िया था. है ना? उस तरीके से और सोचना चाहिए तुम्हें. उसमें कोई fight नहीं है कि कौन ज़्यादा over time देता है. You can मतलब जब हम डिफरेंस पूछ रहे हैं बट सर आप सही थे मतलब आपने सही बोला कि मैन्युफैक्चरिंग में होता है मैन्युफैक्चरिंग में ज्यादा देते हैं हमने ये किया है ना तुमको क्या लगता है <laughs> तो और और एक जगह जो बताया मैं तुम्हें याद दिलाना सर वो ना मेरे दिमाग चैलेंजेस चैलेंजेस एज एन एचआर व्हाट आर द चैलेंजेस मेरे को मेरे दिमाग में कुछ और चल रहा था बट मेरे मुंह पे कुछ और आ गया जो जो मैं ये पूछा था चेंजेस दैट आफ्टर कोविड हम्म हम्म है ना तो दो क्वेश्चन पूछा था हाँ ठीक है तो एक तो आफ्टर कोविड में ना जब तुम्हें बताना था ना यू कुड हैव डिवाइडेड डिफरेंट रोल्स ऑफ एच आर की रिक्रूटमेंट में ये चेंज आया है सिलेक्शन प्रोसेस में ये चेंज आया है ट्रेनिंग एंड डेवलपमेंट में ये चेंज आया है एम्प्लॉय एंगेजमेंट में ये चेंज आया है सेटिस्फेक्शन लेवल में या फिर डिफरेंट डिफरेंट जो भी एच के फंक्शन होते हैं ना उसके हिसाब से तुम बता देते चेंजेस तो उसमें क्या होता है कि वो दिखता है कि तुम डिस्क्रीट सोचते हो With respect to different role and uh, functionality of HR, okay? Or एक मैंने पूछा था structured way में देखता answer हाँ hmm. कि जैसे recruitment के लिए अब क्या करते हैं हम selection के लिए जैसे हम ये बोल सकते हैं कि selection के लिए जो चीज हम in campus बुला के करते थे अब हमको इस uh, employee के place पे ही करना है तो challenge है कि उसको technologically इतना साफ रखना पड़ेगा कि वो cheating ना कर पाए वो manipulate ना कर पाए hiring hmm. process में या selection process में है ना तुम देख रहे हो ना मतलब अभी हमने देखा कि मतलब पीपल कैन बेसिकली अगर प्रॉक्टर्ड नहीं है तो पीपल कैन टेक एडवांटेज ऑफ दैट ओके ये सब चीज तुम बता सकते थे कि हर स्टेप पे बता सकते थे हर तरह के फंक्शन और दूसरा और मैंने पूछा था कि जो तुम रोल कम्युनिटी सर्विसेज वाले जो काम करते हो है ना हाउ कैन यू लाइफ और हाउ कैन यू इट कैन बी यूज तो तुम ऐसे भी कह सकते हो हमेशा ना आप Once you are in MBA, you have to think like an MBA, है ना? तो since you have been working in an NGO format, मतलब उसको तुमने start नहीं किया, it's not it's not your brainchild or you you have not defined the organizational structure, but you can uh, when you go there, you can also be thinking in terms of their organizational structure, how they are able to मतलब uh, create the transactions and and find the people to help. जैसे मैं तुम्हें एक सिंपल सी बात बताता हूं इफ आई वांट टू टीच फ्री है ना इट्स नॉट वेरी इजी बिकॉज़ आई विल नॉट बी गेटिंग स्टूडेंट्स हु विल बी कमिंग टू मी जैसे मैं आप बोलूं कि मैं स्मार्ट के थ्रू हम सीएसआर करना चाहते हैं एंड आई वांट टू टीच पुअर पीपल और और पुअर स्टूडेंट्स फ्री टिल 10th क्लास है ना ऐसा नहीं है कि सोचते बच्चे आ जाएंगे सो सो इवन अ अब मतलब होता है ना कि जो सोशली बेनिफिशियल काम या एनजीओ बेस्ड काम हम फ्री देते हैं You need to create a cycle of it. Ki how do you market it? So, you are thinking on an organizational level. Pe so, when you when you be in some other organization apart from your regular, which other organization has hmm. full time job, so you take organizational learning. Lete ho. How they have been doing their businesses? How they have been marketing their thing? Right? And so, with a very with a very less resource, how do they work? Exactly. So, you take that learning. Hmm. Lete ho. दूसरा क्या है कि जब तुम वो तुम्हारे उसमें हमने पढ़ा था फॉर्म में कि यू यूज टू टॉक मेनी स्टूडेंट्स को कैरियर प्लानिंग और कैरियर सपोर्ट के लिए है ना दैट इज डायरेक्टली विल हेल्प यू इन एच आर बिकॉज फॉर एनी कंपनी यू विल बी नोइंग कि विच पर्सन विल बी फिट फॉर व्हाट काइंड ऑफ जॉब एंड एंड नीड व्हाट काइंड ऑफ ट्रेनिंग तो जो जो बेसिकली एच में तो तुमको प्रोसेस सिखाया जाएगा 
बट वर्सिलिटी ऑफ दैट आउटकम बट वर्सिलिटी ऑफ आउटकम और इनपुट वो तुम वहां से सीख रहे हो इस तरह कई चीजें तुम निकाल सकती हो अगर तुम थोड़ा ध्यान से देखो तो हाँ वो थोड़ा और एनालाइज करना पड़ेगा योर राइट सर और मुझे अभी याद है कि मैं खुद वॉलेंटियर्स के इंटरव्यूज लेती थी एंड आई तो इंटरव्यू प्लानिंग वगैरह करना तो ये सब भी चीज कर सकते हो एनी वे इट वॉज गुड ठीक है इससे ज्यादा क्रिटिक नहीं करूंगा मैं करने का तो बहुत कुछ कर सकता था क्योंकि वो होता क्या है ना कि हम लोग तो टीचर है ना तो हमारा तो फर्ज है कि हर लाइन में गलती निकालो तो वैसा अभी हम नहीं कह रहे फर्स्ट इंटरव्यू है तो हम इसको ऐसे ही रख रहे हैं नेक्स्ट टाइम से विल हैव द स्ट्रक्चर्ड इंटरव्यू एंड कंप्लीट फीडबैक एंड मार्क्स फॉर एवरीवन ठीक है चलेगा सर ठीक है चलो ओके okay.